Hey everyone, welcome back. I hope you're having a great week. So I know I've been MIA for a few weeks, but I promise it was for a good reason. I had been gearing up for a show that was demanding most of my attention. So thank you for your patience and uh, let's get to it. So today's video is a little bit of a departure from my usual start to finish painting process. Uh, I wanted to share with you a specific aspect of uh, my creating. Uh, what I do a lot of times when I hit a creative block um, during my painting process. Now currently uh, I was just working on a piece this piece in particular with acrylics and mixed media and it encountered a little bit of challenge. I didn't get to film the entire process, but um, you can watch a lot of it here. So when I find myself stuck, the first thing I do is take a step back and I kind of analyze the piece. Like what's causing me to, you know, to have this block. Um, is it a color issue, composition, maybe it's contrast? Uh, I have to identify before I can, you know, jump into, you know, having a solution for it. In this case, I had finished a floral abstract uh, in acrylics, but I decided it wasn't what I wanted. I began to envision a sort of dreamy, carefree, whimsical sort of figure in the middle of the painting. So I began sketching her out, um, but even then I hit another block. So I did this here, but I did not get a chance to film it. Um, one thing I do is, is that I it's a trick I do. I pull out my stencils in black paint. Um, and then I start to randomly make marks on the canvas, uh, breaking up the monotony. Uh, in this case, since I had the figure, um, I just put the marks inside the uh, figure's dress or what was going to be the dress. Uh, some, in some cases, I put it all over the whole canvas. So after I was done with my mark making, I wanted to darken and make her dress more uniform, uh, sort of uniform the colors. So I love purple, so I broke out my purple translucent paint and some glazing medium, because even though the paint is translucent, it can always be a little bit more sheer. So I started by experimenting and adding different colors. Um, I even added a opaque teal into the mix, but because of the uh, glazing medium that I had used, which is by Golden, I believe it's just a satin glazing medium, I mixed that in. It still made uh, the paint not completely transparent, but it made it a, a Made it, it didn't make it completely opaque either. And as you can see, just here, I made some significant changes by adding the figure and adapting and evolving as the artwork was progressing. Um, and it's okay to deviate from your initial plan if it enhances the result, right? Um, so now, when it comes to the face or faces, uh, I, I use mixed media. I use paint and I also use water-soluble crayon. Um, I kind of put the face face kind of where I know we're in black paint where I kind of know where I want the features to be and um, I usually will let that dry and then move on to something else and then come back after it's dried and start adding um, 
a lighter color paint see what the black paint does is it gives it a little bit of a base to create shadows and just make it look more painterly and um, as I start to layer you can see the black coming through underneath um, using black and white using the white can make the the, the uh, figure look a little bit more ghostly in this case I was using a unbleached titanium um, which is it's not stark white it's it's almost like a skin tone um, I'll usually use that as a base for skin tone um, and then I'll add in uh, other colors I'll either add in pink or uh, if I want a darker figure I'll, I'll use burnt sienna or burnt umber and um, also uh, alizarin I'll use that so that I can create a more um, skin tone a color a skin color sorry <laughs> Um, but again, I spent a lot of coiled bit of time on my faces and I'll start adding paint and using my finger. I, I create them mostly with my fingers. I use a hog hair brush and my fingers. Um, so my hands are always a complete mess before the end. I also like to use the texture that's already present in the piece as well, I like to use that to my advantage. So texture on a canvas, um, I, I love it. I mean, I use paper and texture paste and crackle paste and gel medium and these kinds of things add depth and interest um, when you're applying them and then you're putting paint over them. It just, it's a fantastic way to um, add something to the piece and overcome those creative blocks. Pushing past challenges is a part of the creative journey, uh, but enjoy it. I mean, don't be afraid to make bold decisions. I mean, some of my best work comes from, you know, making those kinds of decisions and, and sometimes making mistakes, a lot of times making mistakes, but a lot of times I find that when I make mistakes, uh, my best work happens.
So I hope you found this helpful. Um, If you have any of your own tips for overcoming creative hurdles or roadblocks, please feel free to share them in the comments. Uh, Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more art-related content. And until next time, uh, keep creating and happy painting. Bye.